Almost fake views? Really? Is it? I don't know. So, an honest, a YouTube rival. So what is Rumble? They're a YouTube rival. Everyone in chat here really knows about Rumble. You probably watch some stuff on Rumble. We're streaming live to Rumble right now, actually, among other platforms. People love to talk about it, but how many are actually using it? So here's what we're going to do. It says fake views. Shout out to Cram for the thumbnail. You are fake views. So let's talk about Rumble. You are fake news. As someone who's been amplifying and creating anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, independent media for the last few years, I've seen YouTube censor plenty of creators. Channels and people I watch have been demonetized, like the Convo Couch and others. Others have been temporarily suspended for TOS violations that are never clear, including Indie News Network themselves. A few were outright kicked yeah. off YouTube and how their channels and content erased. Like, I know Jimmy Young has had like four channels knocked out and T-Lav has had a bunch of channels taken out and they're coming for the independent review you too. I have 70 alternative accounts! <laughs> Every time that happens, um... They are, there are, there are inevitably a bunch of people who suggest they switch to Rumble, which is also Wall Street owned like YouTube. I wanted to mention that. All right. But has positioned itself as much more hesitant to censor content and creators than YouTube. I also want to say that. Rumble, in addition to Rockfin and Odyssey, are three lesser known platforms that cater to political independence, those who question government narratives, and video creators and publishers who fight the corporate media apparatus. Rumble has developed itself a reputation for catering to right wingers, but a platform is only, right. A platform is only comprised by the creators who choose to publish to it. I've heard similar accusations thrown at Odyssey and at BitChute, another video platform that refuses to censor creators. We have channels on all three platforms yep. for both Indie Left Media, right, as well as Indie News Network. I think Twitter automatically blocks. Uh... One of those, isn't it? BitChute? I believe it, it marks BitChute links as unsafe. Yeah. All, of them, all of them have their benefits, drawbacks, idiosyncrasies, and challenges to work with as a content creator. So I wanted to write this from the perspective of someone that would not normally write this and give a little inside baseball with it as well. None of these three come even close to the number of viewers, engagement, or chat volume as YouTube. For the same stream because we said we stream simultaneously there right now we've got more than 30 people watching on youtube and i can tell you that we don't have that many watching over on rumble or rockfin or an odyssey we don't stream so live please, whatever that too yes and the links are of course <laughs> there okay our rockfin channel shout out to rockfin.com slash ind left news has over 4,000 followers, yet YouTube crushes Rockfin in views, despite only 1,850 YouTube subscribers. Funny, but our Rumble channel, which only has about 750 followers, consistently somehow rivals or beats the YouTube, beats the YouTube, in terms of live stream view counts. Now, I have full disclosure here that I have no insider knowledge here. I don't own shares of Rumble stock. I probably should have disclosed that somewhere too. I'm not an owner. Or a shareholder. I have no stake other than as a creator. The only evidence of what's happening I have are my eyes, ears, observations, logic, and stats from my own channels, which we're going to share here, plus whatever's public. And I've got some public information that we pulled as well. Now, to be completely honest, I didn't really want to write this post at all. I like Rumble, but it was inspired by my buddy Rich Slutsky, who writes a Substack, by the way, lies, counter law. Uh, uh, counterspin lie, spin lies and counterspin. I don't know. I'll, I'll put the link in the chat. Rich is awesome. Subscribe to him on Substack and notes. He has the uncanny ability to inspire the following process. One, find an issue that's important to me. Then he peels at a scab that I've been seeing that few others seem to see, talk about, or care about, which in this case, people seem to not really care about, but I still think it's important. Three, inspire me to wax rhapsodic about it on notes and in a reply to him. Then realize that this really belongs in an article or even a series because it's too long. And then go to my dashboard and open up create posts. So here we are. And here's his note. And I'm going to open this up. Oh, I don't have to open it. Good. 
So it says, headline figures. Rumble lost nearly $60 million in the last six months. And he wrote this in September, and that was over for the first half of 2022, 23. Rumble video counts may not be entirely accurate due to pre-roll pre loops counting as views. Huh. I found this very interesting. Also, Rumble is wasting money on exclusive contracts, and it isn't profitable because of this. So Rich's tag was actually to the founders, co-founders of Substack. It says, so fellows, what are some things Substack can take away from this critique of Rumble? I'm looking to the last point mostly, that Rumble seems too focused um, on securing legacy figureheads with lucrative contracts. I see parallels in your Substack election, and I would hate for you to go the way of the Rumble bird. That's funny. Instead of the dodo bird, the rumble bird. So, like I said, this inspired rumble me. Bird. And I and I replied and it started me thinking. And I opened this uh, up. Let's get ready to rumble. Isn't that later? No, that's it's time. Right. That's his <laughs> that's his brother. That's Michael Buffer, by the way. That's not, his brother. Right, that's not, Michael Buffer. Not yeah. Bruce. Did you not realize that? Yeah. Okay. No, I I know that. It was just you. <laughs> Why did it pause that? Uh, anyway. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Finished it out. So I have lots of feelings about Rumble. And they must be doing something right because as I'm writing this, and this is what I wanted to talk about, the Associated Press, the narrative managers for the establishment, just published a hit piece about them and the content they refused to censor, mostly around the coordinated hit against Russell Brand and Rumble's refusal to demonetize and deplatform him at the request and behest and demand of the UK Parliament. Yeah. The corporate yep. media and the establishment used the Associated Press. Now, this was on the night of the Republican presidential debate, the second one, and they published Amazing. an article about, and here's the article, and I'm going to give it one second of view time because I don't want to give it much light, but RNC's live streaming partner is a haven for disinformation and extremism. All right, I'm going back. I'm getting rid of that nonsense and garbage. Now, who is Rumble? I'm going to give you a real assessment from someone who's been using it, from someone who's heard all the smears and all the garbage and uses it every day and actually watches content on Rumble. I'm one of the few that actually does, and he can attest to it. I watch on Rumble. I watch on Rockfin. I use the alternate platforms that I actually subscribe to and tell others to. Practice what I preach. They're a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. Stock symbol RUM. And what's cool is that if you put a dollar sign RUM in a Substack post and hit space, it'll actually pull in the growth on the thing or, you know, the last whatever. They sell themselves as an anti-YouTube champions of free speech. This is the description in, on, you, on Yahoo Finance is that they operate on in the U.S. and Canada and internationally. They're Canadian-based. They operate Rumble.com platform, which where users can subscribe to channels to stay in touch with creators, access video on demand, and live content streamed by creators. Sounds like YouTube. It also operates Locals.com, a subscription platform for creators and subscribers to engage through video on demand, podcasts, live chat, polls, and community discussions, and the Rumble Advertising Center, an online advertising management exchange, which is also something they've launched this year. Company was founded yeah, in 2013. So mm -hmm. Public, pretty much. That's well, that's what we're yeah. Well, yes, they're public, and they started appearing on my radar about two years ago when they signed a deal with Glenn Greenwald, Matt Orfala, and others. I signed up for a free profile that day and started uploading content there. So here's Matt's mm -hmm. tweet, where he tagged the wrong thing that day, and I actually replied and said I'm signing up. I was actually a premium Patreon subscriber to Matt, so I had that right away. That same day, like I said, an article entitled, that was back in 2021, August of 2021, that got Rumble a lot of light, also from the Washington Post this time, again, from the narrative management establishment that's creating their own enemy. An article entitled, oh. Rumble, a YouTube rival popular with conservatives will pay creators who challenge the status quo, was published in the Washington Post. And it gave a lot of light to the announcement. Like I said, that was Glenn Greenwald. Yep. We, we covered we covered that they were going to uh, have 
debate. Rumble was going to be the only place with the Republican debates too. We covered it a long time ago. Live exclusively that. on Maybe INN News. on Rumble. No, live on Actually. INN News. No, that's not true. But anyway, Rumble acquired locals, like we is said. It's on the couple. YouTube. It is on. It's on YouTube. I don't no, know if no. we put it up on YouTube. We I'm, might have. I'm pretty pretty sure you put it up as a clip on YouTube. Maybe. I remember we, we that was the week we had we were off of YouTube because of Oh, the- maybe not. Yeah. I think we got it all up there, but a couple months after I, I signed up did. for a free account in October of 2021, Rumble acquired Locals, which is a Substack like competitor. So they offer a newsletter and a website that forces creators to paywall all their content for 19.99 a month each subscriber. Now, as it turns out, I'm not correct on that. They can, the content creator does control how much they charge and lee camp actually reached out to me and said you know mine's like six dollars a month it was five dollars a month last year which i believe is the minimum but locals attracted personalities like tulsi gabbard kim iverson and nico house early on in 2019 and 20. Mm -hmm. you know who started locals by the way dave fucking Um, rubin dave rubin founded locals oh that makes sense it allowed portnoy not Portnoy, no, Dave Rubin. Like former TYT douchebag turned conservative Dave Rubin, like, who has a big Rumble sandwich platform. man. By the way, why do you think he's pushed so heavily on Rumble? Because he built locals, which they yep. bought from him, and he's probably got a board seat or some kind of stake. Anyway. Hmm. Rumble, I'm, I'm sorry, locals allowed creators to have a more intimate conversation with their fans since everyone was paying to be there. I am not a fan of this model as it only works if you have a following willing to shell out 20 bucks a month for your content. And most smaller creators yep. don't. Looks like you can set your monthly as low as five, but there is no free tier option for subscribers. Now, League again claims that there is plenty of free content available on his locals. Most of the content creators on locals do not make a lot of content free or it's really old. And then I, yeah. I, I link to the latest webpage catering to creators and reminding people that since acquisition, Glenn has moved exclusively to, to locals from Substack, locals. abandoning it. Okay. He's likely also a big investor in Rumble, though I am speculating and I don't have data on that. I'm guessing they've given him options, yeah. shares, etc. Mm-hmm. Which gives him stake and in the And then they also the own Colin, right? Well, that's the thing. They they acquired Colin earlier this oh. year, this past May. They announced that they were moving into the podcast space which is a natural complement to the video and locals platforms. This time it was PayPal Mafia uh, member David Sachs, his buddy, uh, Peter Thiel's buddy. Peter Thiel is one of the people who put the finance deal together for Rumble. Yeah. Call-in was the target this time. They were paying creators to publish audio call-in shows with fans over the web and mobile apps. Um, Sachs was given a board seat as part of the deal. It remains to be seen how this new acquisition is going to be integrated with Rumble, video, and locals. But... I speculate on that. So now that we've established who Rumble is, back to Rich's post, reminding people of what happened corporate-wise. But a $60 million loss in six months is a massive burn rate. Not sure how long they can sustain and stay in business before running out of money. Huge. Now that the establishment is after them, they're pressuring advertisers to leave the platform, and Burger King's already caved, And likely, there will not be many banks or VCs with open wallets thanks to their unwillingness to play ball with NATO and censor a creator at their behest. Now, I wanted to call attention Mm -hmm. to this. This is where people are pulling this loss of $60 million. This is net income for the quarters ended Q2 and Q1 of 2023. All right. So they lost almost $30 million in, in the first half of this year. Or in the first quarter, second quarter of this year, and almost twenty nine million in the first quarter of this year. Now, and that's a spreadsheet. No, it's not. It's actually an income statement. Spreadsheets. It's an income statement. Whatever, close enough. Someone so, made it in a spreadsheet originally. I'm gonna give you my <laughs> you assessment know. of here's here's the good, the bad, and the huh. I like Rumble overall, overall as a live wow. streaming platform. I am hopeful for its future. They've been responsive when I've asked them for help. They're improving it regularly. They're listening to the creator's feedback. They'll back up your YouTube channel automatically, which is nice, but has issues of its own. Because if you stream to both Rumble and YouTube, your YouTube stream then backs up to your Rumble channel, and then you've got duplicates of your streams. They definitely have holes technically, 
but they seem to know where they are and have a roadmap to address them. Rumble has been busy spending money on tech for sure. In the past year, they've introduced a new interface on the desktop version. They launched new mobile apps for Samsung TVs, among others, as well as upgrades to their mobile app. They've built two studios in South Florida, in Miami and Longboat Key. Mm -hmm. They launched supporter badges and monthly subscriptions with, by the way, 100% creator rev share through the end of this year. If you subscribe to our Rumble channel, and we do have the ability to have somebody subscribe to our Rumble channel, nobody does, but you can. They also launched the ability earlier this year to offer pay-per-view, which they did with a Russell Brand comedy special. And then earlier this month, they launched the beta release of the Rumble Cloud, which you can learn all about. I linked the, all these press releases there. They're also financially focused on signing exclusive content creators. Like Substack, they get involved in elevating content creators and paying them for exclusivity. Ben Greenwald, Russell Brand, Kim Iverson, and others like Viva Fry have been paid large sums of money by Rumble to build studios and produce exclusive content for the platform. Per the Washington Post article two years ago, the company declined to provide financial details, but Greenwald said the top creators' year-long contracts will pay in the mid-range six figures. That expired in August of 22. So they had to re-up somebody mm. last year and then re-up somebody the year after. However, just this year, they've announced more Rumble exclusives, including Dave Rubin, Donald Trump Jr., Redacted wow. News, Recchietta Law. Again, they've made public PR um, press releases with each one of these. Bob Mennery, wow. Steven Crowder was a really big one because Crowder abandoned YouTube and went exclusively to Rumble. DJ Academics. G. Dion, the first Republican pri presidential primary debate, and then these other guys I've never heard of that are gamers. So they've been going after I, gamers. Kaisen at well, Who's rapper Kaisen as at? well. Uh, uh, Kaisen at I show speed. Uh, Rice gum phase. Kazen phase is going to be definitely gamer. Right. I don't know what game he plays. I have issues with Rumble too. Professional shit. The elevation of channels like Dana White's slap fight for power slap and the political oh. agenda they push. Do I really need an alert? This era is Don King. Do I really need an alert every time Donald Trump gives a speech? No. Are they really just a I mean, platform? Hey, are they really just what? a platform if they're picking winners? You can read all about Don't it be below. Rude. Yeah, I know. Don't be rude. Yep. I have it too. You can read all about it on this post below which I published on 9-11 and Reef covered on INN News, which was talking about at two substack. Yes, at two substack. Yeah. Now, I'm going to get a little technical. A a this, is, this is for the real Latin. live streaming geeks in the chat, uh, those that actually do. But I want to explain some of the challenges that we encounter that make Rumble difficult for people to want to work with and use. So for the past year, every live stream that, Everyone has ever done has been issued a unique, what they call an RTMP key. That's a URL and password that they then need to plug into their streaming software app. Like we're using a software called OBS each time before going live. Why does this matter? Well, a no other platform has this. They issue what's called static keys. So basically we set up the key and we set up a plug into the channel once. And then all we have to do is turn it on when we're ready to go live and nothing more needs to be done except setting up the live stream at these alternate platforms. But we never need to make another connection, which is what has oh, to happen gotta, here. An extra step that- You that, gotta go click, go live in Rockfin. You Anytime do. Anytime you wanna figure that out, Rockfin, where that just automatically works, that'd be great. Our friend Big Bad Crab has trouble with the, with the stream key and remembering to do that. I'll, I'm gonna call him out. Uh, anyway, this is yet another extra step, which can only be completed once the Rumble stream has first been set up. Rumble then provides you with the RTMP key, which you then have to go back and plug into your streaming app. And oh yeah, by the way, you can only create a new stream within 24 hours of going live, which is a whole other challenge in itself. I could not schedule this stream on Friday night, even though I had this everything else scheduled everywhere else. I couldn't do it because you have to wait 24 hours out. I said also it's clunky. People have trouble figuring out or they just don't bother. 
So no integration with StreamYard and Restream. A lot of content creator streamers use those two apps, one of those two apps, in order to stream out. Restream, and definitely. What that means, we use Restream here. A lot of them use StreamYard. But outside of the above mentioned dynamic RTMP key, all right, so what it means is that you need to first create a stream in both Rumble and Restream to connect the two. It doesn't have any live chat integration. I actually have to have Rumble chat and Rockfin chat separate on separate screens in order to be able to show them separately because they're not integrated with Restream chat. It eliminates the potential for combined stream analytics. How many people were actually watching across all the platforms? You don't know unless you look and compile that manually yourselves. The data becomes very fragmented to gauge total viewer engagement across all platforms. There's also no pushing of title and description from StreamYard and Restream, which you can set up. And the way that that works is it's supposed to be a central hub to push out your stream and all the data that goes with it from one place. So if you catch a typo, it's then got to be changed in all the places where you put that instead of just in Restream, which would then push out. Now, all three alternative platforms mentioned at the top have this issue in some way, shape or form. In all fairness, Rockfin, Rumble, Odyssey, all three, you have to create the stream separately, then go back and make a restream, which is what I do. There's also, in Rumble, no analytics about viewer behavior while live, like how much time they average spent on stream. There are no playlists or a way to organize your videos and live streams, though we hear that's coming. And a static RTMP come, it, it, it's supposedly coming for creators too. They also have no shorts or vertical video capability yet, though they announced something like that was coming a while back. No word since. What I also find interesting is that they have this developer documentation. This it has everything about how to actually use and run Rumble. But you wouldn't know it. This should be the how to help screen, but it's not. You had to I had to dig to find this. And I was like, wow, I wish I had this like a month and a half ago. This would have been really helpful. Amazingly enough, I mean, or they could have used um, this this classic tutorial. Uh, hey, listen. You know, whenever you whenever you needed needed to be told what to do. Right. Their mobile app, amazingly enough, when we're looking at our page, has no ability to share the page to social media. There's no share button on your page. You have to go into an individual video. But hey, if I just want to share, hey, subscribe to our page. There's no way to do that on the mobile app. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Believable. Um, Speaking of, with with them getting Trump Jr. <laughs> and Trump, you might as well add Trump. People are like, but you just said Trump. How could you say two? Because there's another Trump. Mm -hmm. Plays Hearthstone. Uh, big Twitch guy. Um, just get him too. I I, I don't I don't well. know who you're, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't. Yeah, it's anyway. okay. Do you even know what Hearthstone is? No. They're, they're, it's a game, right? Is it no? Game? No, it is a game. Yep. Now I said but that by I'm, the World of Warcraft people, it's a Blizzard Entertainment. It's a card game, and you put the cards down. And, yeah. But as I, I indicate here again, I'm also confused at how Rumble plans to integrate locals and call in, though the potential could rival and even eclipse Substack with public video fully integrated into and and embedded into a locals article because you can't do that right now with Substack. You have to put a screen cap and link to it. Now, here's where we finally get to the fake views. Sorry I'm taking so long, everyone. But no. we love the YouTube. No, you're good. The spiffing Brit. All right. He's a gamer who likes to break yep. games. I'm drinking Yorkshire Gold right now, in fact. Nice. Okay. Spiffing Brit likes to break games. He likes to find exploits and then he likes to make videos about it. And we laugh and we laugh and we laugh. But he also loves to find platform exploits. This recent one about YouTube live streams and multiple tabs and windows open and refreshing may or may not be relevant here. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to include it anyway. So again, when we're done, go and watch this video. I told you this is in depth. I go deep. And thanks to refund. Thanks to Reef on the spiffing Brit. What do we got? Right click that video, put it in chat. Ah, um, that's a good idea. Right click there. Copy, copy link. link address. Yes, sir. I'm proud of you. Uh, that was easy. Thank you. Oh my God. I agree with Rich and others view that Rumble's view numbers are certainly in question. What do they consider to be a, a view exactly? 
Rumble just added a unique views the other day to its stats and versus raw views, but what's the difference? They don't tell anyone. Are they saying that people watch twice? Rich linked the video in did his we, post from this guy named Jose on YouTube, right? Did we um talk about what that spiffing crit was about? That a little, a one? little bit. Which again, yes, it says that YouTube live streams and multiple YouTube tabs and streams. windows open. So what he's saying is, is that he's that able guy, to show more people. He open. also that stream. Oh my god! Where they talked about in the video where he talked about having the. So the whole stream was a, a thing in and of itself where he like he scheduled the stream like like three, four weeks in advance or whatever after putting out a video like, hey, watch this stream. So make sure you do this. And then he would constantly like move the time to so be like, yeah, this is like, you know, next Tuesday. And then next Tuesday would come out and be like, it's next Wednesday. Like, so it would literally accrue these views every time because it re every time he changed the time, it would republish like eight hours before the video. Like, and then he would just do it again. He'd go back and move the time. Like, he was and, a and, genius. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, there's live stream chat open the entire time and people are chatting and he's, te and he's telling them to like it. And as it turns out, he's... Let me go back here. He is running a one second video on the live stream. Oh, dude, just watch it. Right. It is to like not. advertise it. It's so yeah. good. His YouTube exploits are it's amazing. so good. He, bro he broke the he broke the true. algorithm. He does it all the time. He's amazing. But so good. But I'm gonna get back to this article, which talks again about yeah. um, this guy Jose. He put up a video about how Steven Crowder's rumbles numbers are fake. And his case basically breaks down to these six points. Number one was that he was getting fewer than 2 million views per stream on YouTube most of the time before he signed exclusively with Rumble. He then went on hiatus, which is bad for a channel's momentum, but concedes that Rumble was promoting his channel after leaving YouTube. Now, his statistics show that Rumble viewers are one-sixth as likely to leave a comment on, which was also reflected in his numbers, on, in Crowder's numbers. Except mm -hmm. that if his zero audience, engagement, except if his audience was coming over from YouTube, why wouldn't they also chat on Rumble, save for having to set up an account? It makes no sense. If the same people uh -huh. are coming over, the pre roll video yep. seems to be picking up a lot of views themselves, similarly to what the spiffing Brit did the pre roll before they actually went live, waiting for the stream to start. But should that really count as a live stream view? Quote, I'm pretty confident in saying that Crowder's live stream debut counts and possibly other streamers on Rumble are being boosted by counting views of people waiting for the stream to start. By the way, we had 100 viewers tonight on this stream before we went live on Rumble. Yep. A sample of two weeks for Ben Shapiro and Tim Pool's channels found that they had similar issues, and it seems like users on Rumble just are not interested in leaving comments or liking and disliking videos. Or liking or disliking or subbing. What? Is here those three things? Red flag, red flag. And we know we asked you to. Right? So, I'm going to talk about something that I've been doing, which is that before we went on break, every morning I would take a clip of How Did We Miss That and I would loop it on Rumble live stream to Rumble and to Twitch on my channels only. You and your loops. Me and my loops, which rate which Reef hates. But I was trying to prove something, and I think I loops. did prove something. These are the above stream results from a clip that was run at 8 a.m. Eastern and played on loop 10 times as a live stream, a feature that restream, thankfully, empowers subscribers to take advantage of, extending the time that they're live. But what does that mean? This clip is only 12 minutes long. However, when it's looped 10x, we get 120 minutes, 120 minutes of stream time out of a 12-minute clip. Pretty good. If Rumble is pushing channels who are live to the top of feeds and subscriptions, as well as spotlighting live content, I have a much better chance of it being pushed to the top of news feeds as long as my video is live. Combine that with the understanding that the Time the average person spends watching videos is about 10 to 15 minutes. So as long as I'm live during those 10 to 15 minutes, logic dictates 
there's a better chance my video will be shown than if I'm not live and I just upload the video. This has been my hypothesis and the thing that I have been trying to prove for months. Now, again, this is the Gordon video that, that we published, and it had 422 yep. unique views, 744 raw views. Uploads get almost no raw, views. Raw dog. Right? Versus the same thing live streamed, partially because the homepage for Rumble showcases whoever is live up top. You can see how prominently live appears at the top of the horizontal navigation bar on the desktop version, which remains static as you scroll down the page. The news and politics categories, by the way, aren't featured at all without scrolling to the right on the navigation bar or way down on the homepage. I've been categorizing this show as podcasts with the secondary category of trending news, but notice what's there. Mm -hmm. All right. Now here's the here's what's interesting. Here's that stream again from Gordon. 746 raw views, 424 unique. I uploaded the same video about like the day before I published this article. And after 17 hours, it had 13 views. Not hundreds of views. Uh -huh, but what's that is, one down at the down at the bottom? This was the one that I streamed on a loop for two hours. Two hours and one minute oh, live. Oh, and it's got it's got seven hundred and forty six views. Yep. And and as a clip okay. uploaded for twelve minutes, it was twenty four views in comparison when you're sharing these. Mm. I uploaded, like I said, the same twelve minute clip to my Rumble channel last night as the one streamed on a loop above. It got nowhere near the views as the live version. So my question is, how do they count the views exactly? Well. My speculation is that when a user on the mobile app is scrolling through their feed, the preview of the video in the middle of the screen might be considered a view. Now, I took a screen cap of this. Notice that they don't show the average viewing time per person anywhere statistically. Watch the below short video of me scrolling Rumble and the Rumble mobile app. Is Rumble counting each time I stop and the video starts playing a view? Because I did it in about five times in about 30 seconds here. Watch this. So there's TNT. Then T-Lab starts playing. Then I scroll a little more. And Anti-War starts playing. Anti-War News with Dave DeCam. Subscribe to Anti-War News. Indie Media Award honoree, by the way. There's Russell Brand, Brand and Glenn Greenwald talking about Russell Brand. That's five videos already, right? In 33 seconds. That's everything. So that's my question. So something isn't computing here. And this is this is Reef's thing. Rumble view counts on live streams already rival or beat YouTube by as much as double. Yet the chat rate, likes, and comments are not commensurate with the number of people they claim are watching. Rumble is showing the raw views publicly, by the way, not the unique views. This bigger number. All right. So stream results. I'm looking here. This is the Indie Left Media Rumble channel. Now we actually co-stream to both INN Rumble, INN YouTube, and my YouTube channel. So I have to combine those two things when I'm comparing it with what's going on on Rumble. When I do, you're seeing about 200 or about 180 unique views on YouTube and 20 likes and no comments. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 51 likes between them. So here are the results, mm -hmm. right? You've got 187 combined on YouTube versus 196 on unique rumble. The stark difference here is in the like count. 51 likes on YouTube compared with two likes on rumble. On 472 views? How? Here's another one. INN's Randall Roundtable run a few weeks ago. Now, INN has a much larger subscriber base on YouTube, yet 
this was telling us that they had uh, 382 raw views versus 186 on YouTube. Even if you take the lower number and compare it, they're almost comparable. So again, what YouTube is showing me, or what, what Rumble is showing me, is that their numbers are almost the same as YouTube, and that's impossible. That's impossible. All right. Awesome. Much more, much more engagement from the YouTube audience. Much more engagement from the YouTube audience. More likes, more live chats too. By the way, funny enough, this was the one stream where YouTube viewers was actually more than the Rumble unique users. Every other one, Rumble's beating YouTube. Here's another one yeah. from Nobody Wants to Work Anymore. Subscribe to INN to watch that exclusive show. Right now, we're running Thursday nights at eight at twelve. Th at 10.30 p.m. Wow, it's sweaty in here. A lot more views. 455 it, okay. raw views to 105. So, Rumble also, by the way, allows for third-party site video embedding and monetization, which would be helpful to Substack creators, like I said, that also publish to Rumble. I think they allow that to locals. But like I do, I always say follow the money. Rumble lost $10 million on average in the first six months of 2023 after losing over $40 million in the last three quarters of 2022. Add that up. To me, that's around $100 million in losses without counting Q3 of 2023 that ended yesterday, which is almost over and likely to burn another $30 million or more. According to the balance sheet below, they also raised almost $300 million last year. Looking at the difference in cash on hand from December 31st, 21 to December 31st, 22. So my question over how long do they have left? Well, they just got a massive infusion of cash. And here's the proof in the pudding right there. 46 million they had at the end of 2021, 337 million at the end of 2022. That's a difference of 290 million. My guess is that they got 300 and their burn rate already had started at 10 and they had already lost $10 million before they reported the end of the year. I said, they're going to likely have to cut that burn rate at some point. But hopefully it comes more from picking content winners than for paying and paying them for exclusivity rather than at the expense of platform innovation and development and tech. But we all know how that always works. Right? What do you think? What do you, you got something to say there? Not really. I mean, follow the money. Well, here's the rest of the money. I got so much of it. Here's the rest of the money picture. If you're not getting paid for exclusive content by Rumble, unless you're getting a lot of Rumble rants, which I don't know of anyone other than maybe Jimmy Dore that is. Why? What the hell? Creati creators are Why? not making big money. And I can confirm this from RBN that's making almost nothing. Primo Radical famously left Rumble because in five months of producing content and putting all his content up, he had been paid a total of three cents by the platform. Unless they're being paid by a Rumble by for a Rumble exclusive show, my guess is that most of the creative of the creators on the platform are not making much, if at all. There is the ability for users to subscribe monthly or leave a one-time donation Rumble ramp, but based on the fractional level of engagement as YouTube. It doesn't seem possible that Rumble is paying out the, the same kind of revenue that most creators can survive on Rumble income the way some survive, or at least used to, on YouTube income from subscriptions and Super Chats. Anecdotally, I'm just going to show you how much INN has earned in all of 2023. $3.48. Call the accountant. Remember that Rumble also keeps 30% of live stream, live stream donations, rants, and starting in 2024, 30% of all monthly subscriptions too. Just like YouTube, by the way. Rockfin keeps 28% of the rate, rate tokens donated. <clears throat> and there it is. You can see by month. Basically, we had one big month where we were we earned over 60 cents. Wow. Oh, look out. Now. This is where I, I leave some unanswered questions and I want to, that I would like to address, which is number, number one, how much runway do they have left financially if they're currently burning 10 million a month and that burn rate has been accelerated this year? I don't want to continue to invest time in a platform that's not going to stick around. 
Number two, how do they count views and unique viewers? What if someone's logged in but watches on mobile and then switches to desktop? What about on the same desktop but multiple browsers? Like opening Brave, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge and tuning into the stream. Is that counted as four views? Because I believe it is. Also, does it count if a video previews for a second in the scrolling news feed on mobile like we showed? And how do they determine how many people are watching live? I want to know. How long will they continue to pay big money for exclusive content from popular creators? And when they stop, what's going to happen then? What's the long-term plan to integrate call-in with Rumble and Locals? Will we see an integrated platform to eventually rival Substack? My guess is yes, but how long is it going to take them to get there? And what's Substack innovating in the process? Now, Substack has taken notes which gives you a social aspect. Now, Rumble is a step behind when it comes to that, unless they acquire Blue Sky or Gab or one of these other Twitter-like type of atmospheres and try to integrate that. And then they're just playing copycat the Substack, by the way. They don't want to do that either. Will they play nicely with Substack, which is technically a competitor to locals? to allow for easy embedding of Rumble streams in Substack posts like YouTube does, allowing Rumble creators to monetize with ads on embedded vids on Substack. That would be nice. And it's why some people actually use Rumble. I know that Jason Burmis, for example, talked about being able to embed his video in the post millennial. And he got like 70,000 or the gateway pundit. He got 70,000 views on his Rumble video. Who knows if that's real? And then number six is, will Rumble finally integrate with StreamYard and Restream? Because we know that the cost is $15,000 a month, according to my people at Rockfin that told me. Now, I got to make some, of, some, some conclusions here. We're getting to the end, finally, and we can get to some boats. I'm sorry it took so long, but this is, this is really important. I think that Rumble has about a year to 18 months left this burn rate before they need to think about either raising another capital round, which they might already be doing if they're not already working on it based on the reportedly explosive average monthly user growth over the past two years. Now they claim that they have 44 million monthly active users as of the last earnings call. We're basically taking rumbles word for it, that they're getting the same views as YouTube on our streams, despite a fraction of the total monthly average users and a fraction of the engagement for the people who they claim are viewing so I think I'm justified in questioning the accuracy of the views per live stream and views per video upload and how they're counted. It seems that the view counts are definitely questionable. I would also love to see Rumble invite an independent analytics company to validate or accurately report on viewing time, engagements, etc., and prove the numbers that Rumble reports to creators and viewers on both live streams and uploads. Also to their shareholders. Remember I mentioned that they're on Wall Street? If their numbers are not what they say they are, can you say the word fraud? That would be massive, massive fraud on a huge scale to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. So I think they should bring in a third-party auditor personally. Finally, Where's the fucking money? Lebowski, yes. Rumble should also add an update to the live stream reporting to the development roadmap to the creators to gain actionable data about user activity during a stream and once it's over. My feeling is they don't want to report that because they won't because that will show you who's actually live and that it's a lot less than they're reporting that it actually is. They've got a long way to go, but these changes are not hard or expensive to implement, and I'm hopeful that they're listening. I have sent this to the people at Rumble. We will all be watching closely. And if you think more people should see this, please share this article and it will be in chat. And it's over at my Substack at indiemedia.today. And then there's all the links to find me and find all this. And we've got a couple of comments and a bunch of likes. And I appreciate everyone that's taking the time to go through this because I know it is long. And I thank everyone for sticking with me on there. Brooke Hines, friend of the show, friend of the network, saying Rubble's UX is horrible. E.g. there's no way to scrub. And when you try to lose your, and when you try, you lose your place, which is also correct. There's also Reclaim the Net, which writes a whole Rumble review that's pretty fair as well. So, 
All right, I'm exhausted. I need boats. Show me the money! Jared! Thank you, Rich, for inspiring me. Thank you to everyone that helped contribute to that article. Give me your feedback. This guy for multiple times checking it and reminding me, oh shit, the 24 hour thing, right. 